Hey guys, it's Dave Dean here and just doing another video and this one's going to be on uh, general car audio talk and um, some of the products that I've seen in the last few weeks that are either coming out or are out now. Um, some of them won't be out until September. Um, but the first one I'm going to talk about is kind of something that I'm interested in and I seen a video probably about three weeks ago with the Moscone rep uh, when they were talking about new products coming out, right? And uh, he mentioned the Moscone Pro 430 it's called so it's a four channel amplifier and it's uh four by 170 watts at four ohms and uh this thing is kind of cool because from zero to 30 watts it's using class a power right and then from 30 watts onwards it transitions into class a b power so that's pretty cool because we've seen other like class a amplifiers before in the past but we've never really seen anything that is class a and then transitions into a b we've seen things that switch from a to a b but never transitioning right so that's kind of a cool aspect of that amplifier and it was because you know what everybody brings in like the plain jane amplifiers all the time it's like whatever right your four channel amplifier or your two channel amplifier or whatnot um, or your five channel and it's all kind of like the same old same old same old so it was kind of cool to see Moscone kind of think outside the box and bring something else out that's different right and you know it's going to sound really good and it's supposed to sound just like the old tube cell amps and I know a lot of people out there uh, especially the people around my age love tube amplifiers right um, and that's supposed to sound like a tube amplifier, like as close as possible. So that's going to be a really interesting amplifier to take a look at. And it's something that I'm kind of interested in getting because I need an extra two channels of ampli amplification in my car if I'm going to add mids, right? And possibly, you know, I don't really want to go to four, four amplifiers, but I, I might end up doing that. But we'll see, right? Because my, I got a 180 uh, watt alternator in uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee here, and um, I don't want to. I don't want to have dim lights and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, I have no issues, no problems whatsoever right now with three amplifiers. So if I did get that one, I'd probably swap it with my Moscone uh, AS 200.2. Um, I'd like to see what the, I don't think anybody's going to be benchmarking that amplifier anyways, cause it's pretty expensive, right? Usually a lot of the amplifiers that you see the guys benchmarks out there, they're usually like the cheaper ones or the ones they buy from Amazon or whatnot, right? You don't really see anybody doing anything real expensive when it comes to dyno, dyno and things. Maybe, maybe Dean will, because he actually, uh, the other day when I was watching one of his shows, he unboxed it, but he didn't talk too much about it because I don't think he really knows too much about it other than he said like the power rating on there. But uh, the other video that I watched was like a few weeks before uh, Dean's and uh, it's the Moscone rep and he's talking all about it, right? So he kind of went into like detail on it and it sounds like it's going to be a really good amplifier. So that was kind of the the thing that, and, and it looks identical. Like if you've seen a Moscone Pro 530, it's in the same chassis, same size as that. It looks identical to it, only it's using that new technology in it inside the amplifier, right? Uh, so that's that's the one that I was the most excited about out of all the car audio stuff I've seen. But other people like different brands. Um, and Alpine showed their uh, uh, status series. So everybody knows about the F1 status, which is like a $38,000 all you have to buy everything that's a total package right it's got an old astel and current sb1000 as their source unit and they rebranded as the 7909 right uh to kind of go with the uh, the old uh, f1 uh, status tradition and uh so everybody knows about that but now they're bringing out the status line which is kind of cool and um so there it's there's going to be speakers there's going to be amps amp slash dsps right i don't know if they're going to do a standalone dsp um, but the one that they were talking about, it has, it's 110 signal to noise ratio, which is really good, right? It's not, uh, it's not obviously as high as like something like this. It's in like the high one twenties. Um, and it's not going to be like the Helix DSP ultra, which is like 117 as into the digital, but 110 is really good, right? Uh, that's excellent for a signal to noise ratio. And it's a, it's a, uh, the one that they were showing is like, it, it had the controller, which looks like your regular kind of Alpine controller that they've had on other DSPs. Looks really good, right? Has a nice volume, uh, uh, wheel on it and the, and it just looks good in general. 
And um, I can't remember the exact wattage on it, but it's a 10 channel DSP. And I believe it's like four by 80 watts and then six by 40 watts. Don't quote me on that, but I, from what I remember, that's what it is, right? So it's okay. It's not too bad, right? You could obviously for the 40 watts, you probably run your rears uh, for two channels on that. And then uh, two channels of the other 40 watts, probably to your tweeters, maybe the 40 watts again to your, uh, um, to your mids or whatever. And then you have 80 watts, like, I don't know what you're going to do with the other ones, but um, I don't know if it's bridgeable either. I have, I have no idea, right? He didn't, he didn't tell you like every single thing about it. Um, but it's, I think I'm pretty sure that's the wattage on it. But like I said, don't quote me on there. Uh, it might've been slightly different than what I just said, but in general, it sounds like it's going to be pretty good. If it's 110 signal noise ratio and it's an amp slash DSP, that's, it's pretty good, right? Um, I don't know the pricing or anything like that on it. And I think they're coming out in September, I believe. Uh, but then Alpine showed some of the stuff that I've already seen too. Like, uh, there are subwoofers, which were kind of cool. Um, the box type thing. So you could buy one subwoofer and I think it fits either the type S or the type R's you could buy one and then you can later buy another one and it fits together and it actually looks pretty good. I don't, I don't know if they're going to sell them and they probably won't. They're probably going to sell them with the actual subs in them. I don't think they're going to sell the box separately uh, because it's a nice looking box actually. Like I would buy that if, if, over like any other prefab type box because it just looks higher end right and i'm sure it's going to sound pretty decent but it's uh, meant for the type s and the type r's uh that they have right and they i've seen these boxes probably like a year ago they showed them but a lot of their stuff was like late to come out just because of covid and whatnot right um so that was kind of like alpine of course they got new decks and stuff like that are coming out too as well i think they got like a new halo uh version coming out and some of the some of the other uh um head units but i'm not i'm a dap guy i'm not a head unit guy uh to me buying something like that is almost like pointless like i can't even see one advantage of buying one of those like especially audio quality wise you're it, this is always going to be better um so that was alpine uh audison had some new forza uh, amp slash DSPs coming out and, uh, they looked like a little bit more promising. I was never a big fan of their AP ones just cause they didn't have any power. And even their other Forza ones were kind of like, nah. um, I would have went Helix all day long, right. For an amp slash DSP, just better software, uh, just better, better specs, better. Everything looks better to me. I think just all around Helix kind of, uh, I think blew the doors off the old Odyssey and stuff. Right. Um, that being said, the newer ones coming out, the new Forza line actually looks not too bad, right? And these ones are bridgeable and uh, they're going to go all the way up to 12 channels. Uh, so that I know they have a five channel and I think they have an eight channel, 12 channel, and I think they have like four channel uh, ones as well. But they're amp slash DSPs, 100 watts at four ohm. So a little bit more power than like your, your Helix ones, your, uh, um, your arc ones, your, the old Odyssey ones. So they got a little bit more power there with the hundred Watts at four ohms. And, uh, so that's, that's good for people that like Odyssey. And it, they kind of look similar to the old or not the old, but the newer SR amplifiers Odyssey brought out come kind of almost like the same look as those. Uh, so, uh, and the other, actually the other cool thing about Odyssey finally is they're bringing out new software for their DSPs, uh, for the new DSPs and stuff that are going to be coming out and they're still backwards compatible with their other stuff. Right. Um, this is like a long time overdue because Audison, you know, they haven't really for software wise, they've kind of stuck with the old, uh, uh, the bit, uh, software, the bit tune and the bit, the bit software over like, I don't know, ever, ever since they've been using like their bit ones and their bit, uh, and the bit, the D tens. And then the bit one, like the, oh, that's, you were talking like well over 10 years ago, right? And they've kind of always used that software. They updated a little bit with like uh, the, the HD, the bit one HD, and then uh, the Virtuoso. And uh, they had one other one. I forget what the name of it, but uh, um, they did, they didn't really do a full on, you know, redoing everything. And I think this time around, I, I could be mistaken, but it sounds like this is like all new 
software that's compatible with the old stuff. So if that's the case, then uh, uh, kudos to Audison because it's about time. <laughs> you can't stay with that old technology forever, right? So it's it's nice that they, they, they're doing it. And it seems like a lot of companies now are focusing on that because they have to, right? I mean, they have, they have to compete with Helix, which is kind of like the top dog when it comes to software. So even like Zapco stepped up their game, right, with their with their previous DSPs that they brought out, uh, their higher end ones too, especially. Uh, it's Their software is a little bit better, um, but it's still not. A, I don't think the software wise is still, I don't think nothing competes to it with Helix still software wise. Um, but the actual units and stuff like that, I think you're going to start seeing a lot more um, DSPs and apps coming out there with like, you know, more channels and more because they have to, right? All, a lot of OEM uh, vehicles that are coming out, like you can see some that are, have over 30 channels, right? Which is kind of crazy. I don't know why they're doing that, but uh, um, they are, right? So now the uh, aftermarket has to kind of keep up with all those uh, uh, channels, um, uh, that the new vehicles are going to be, uh, coming out with. So that was kind of it for Audison. I didn't really see too much else. They said there's going to be more products coming out, but I think they're not coming out until like, uh, later this year. And he, and he was kind of the way he worded it. Um, I think like the eight channel and the 12 channel and stuff is more like kind of a European thing. And it might trickle over to like the U S and Canada, but he didn't, the way he worded it was kind of strange, honestly. Um, because he was kind of, it almost seemed like the five channel was like the only one that was going to be coming over here or the way he was talking about it, right? But uh, we'll see what happens with that kind of stuff. I'm not, like I said, I used to be a big Audison guy, Audison Hertz. I'm not anymore. I'm not, I haven't really seen, you know, that stuff's all good and dandy for some people, but I'm not really interested in um, the, the, you know, the amp, all in one amp slash DSPs. Honestly, it just, some of them, they still just don't have the power that I like. Um, but for your everyday, like you just want better sound. Um, yeah, they're good for like just, you know, throwing a system together. And it's like you're only, it's only one piece. So you're saving money on RCAs and all that kind of stuff, right? You can just run like an optical cord right into it. Or uh, um, some of the ones that have coaxial, you can just do that straight into there, right? Um, the Helix ones that I kind of mentioned those before. Basically, the, they're doing a new version of the P6. I think it's like the P6 Ultimate or something like that. And they have a, um, and that's going to, a lot of people like that one because it's got more power, right? It's got like over, I think it's like about 120 watts. I don't know if the new one's going to be more than like what the old one was for wattage wise. Um, but it's probably going to have like, you know, your optical and coaxial digital uh, inputs uh, as well. And, um, they also have the uh, the Helix DSP Pro Mach. It's either Mach 2 or Mach 3. I can't remember. But a new version of it is coming out too as well. Um, I don't know about that one. Like if I, that, I would imagine they're going to keep it at 10 channels still because they still have like the flagships kind of like the Helix DSP Ultra, right? In the Helix brand. Um, so I would imagine, I don't know what they're going to do to it. Like maybe they're putting new DACs in there or they have to be doing something, right? Um so that, that one's going to be kind of interesting to see what they do with that one. And it's going to be interesting to see what it sounds like compared to like the DSP, uh, the Helix DSP Ultra, right? I'm kind of curious to see what that piece is going to be like. Uh, but I believe they're probably going to stick with 10 channels, but I could be wrong. But that's supposed to be coming out like later this year too as well. And uh, they got a bunch of like speakers and stuff like that that are uh, coming out later on. Um, I didn't really see anything too exciting in the Helix stuff other than that mid, uh, that I, I got to see the prototype when I was down there for me, for stuff that I'm interested in, uh, that was kind of the most interesting thing for me out of, uh, uh, the Brax Helix stuff. And, uh, other than that, uh, I think that's it for this video. I didn't, I don't want to make this one too long. I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the stuff that I was kind of like excited about uh, the Moscone Pro 430 was kind of like the main thing. And then, uh, maybe I'll do another video. So I've tried to not make the videos as long as I probably have in the past. So we'll keep, we'll start keeping this like one under like the 15 minute period. And, 
Uh, I just kind of wanted to talk about that one anyways, because I noticed like, uh, like watch, I watched that video. Then I, well, I seen it on Facebook first and then I watched the video and then I seen Dean kind of unbox it the other day. So I figured I'd come on and do a video and uh, just in case some of you guys aren't aware of it, it's something worth checking out. It's not cheap. Like I said, it's probably about $2,500 Canadian here. So it's kind of, it's, it's up there in pricing, right? But uh, that's it for me, guys. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. I should have like a um, a DAC slash amp uh, that I'll be reviewing next. So something a little bit different. So yeah, we'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good day.